Hi, and welcome to the Linux Security Series. Here, I will tackle the fundamentals of Linux security and how attackers attack Linux machines. So first, before we dive into the security of Linux systems, it's essential to understand the permissions model of Linux machines. Understanding how permissions on Linux systems are managed will help you understand attacks that exploit the permission system, like many privilege escalation techniques. Linux inherited the Unix model of file ownership and permissions. So every file and folder on the system has a set of permissions that specify who is allowed to do what with the file. There are three types of file and directory permissions, read, write, and execute. Read permissions on a file enables the users to read the contents of the file. Write permissions allow users to modify or delete the file. And execute permissions allow users to execute the file as a script or an executable. First, you can view the permissions of a file or a directory by using the ls-l command in the directory. You should see a line like this. Here, the first, the first character indicates whether the item is a file or a directory. A dash means that the item is a file, and a D means that the item is a directory. The next three characters are the permissions of the file's owner. The owner is usually the user who created the file and has most control over it. R indicates read, W indicates write, and X indica indicates execute. And a dash indicates the lack of that permission. Here, the owner can read, write, and execute the file. And in Linux, users are sorted into users' groups, and these groups often share file permissions. The next three characters are the permissions of the owner's group. And the final three are the permissions for everyone else. For example, this file is readable by everyone, but only the owner can write or execute the file. And these two fields indicate the owner's username and group name. Here, you can see that the file is owned by Vicky Lee in the user group staff. You can set file permissions by using the chmod command. In this command, you use the characters u, g, and o to indicate the owner's user, the owner group, and others. For example, to add execution permissions for a file's owner group, you can use the command chmod g plus x and then the file path. And to set execute permissions for everyone, you can simply use the command chmod plus x file path. On the other hand, when you want to remove a permission, you can simply swap out the plus sign for a minus sign. There are also a few special things you can do with the file's permission. The first thing you can do is to set the set UID bit. When the set UID bit is set, the file will always run as the user that owns the file and not as the user who started the program. This only works on executables and not scripts. For example, if an executable is owned by root, then the file will always run as the root user, regardless of who started the execution. For example, since the ping command needs to be executed with root privileges, if you want normal users to be able to use ping, you will need to set the set UID bit for the ping executable. The set UID bit can be set by using the chmod command as well. For example, this command will set the set UID bit on the file. If there is an X character instead of an X or a dash on the owner's permissions, the set UID bit is set for that file. On the other hand, setGID works in a similar way as setUID. When the setGID bit is added to a file, all users can execute the file with the owner group permissions. And if setGID is set on a directory, all the files created in that directory becomes accessible to all users in the parent directory's owner group. The setUID bit can be set by using the chmod command as well. For example, this command will set the setGID bit on a file. And if there is an S instead of X or a dash in the owner group's permissions, then the set GID bit is set for that file. There's also something called the sticky bit in a file's permissions model. If the sticky bit is set on a regular file, it simply makes subsequent execution of the program faster. However, the sticky bit is more commonly used on directories, where it would indicate the file or directories within that directory can only be moved or deleted by the file or directory's owner or the super user. This is commonly used for the temp directory, which is designed to store temporary files created by individual users. You can add the sticky bit by using the command 
chmod plus t and then the path to the directory. And you can recognize it by seeing if the last character of the permission string is a t instead of a regular x or dash. I hope this helps you understand more clearly how Linux permissions are managed. Next time, we'll dive into some privilege escalation techniques that allow attackers to access or execute files despite not having permission. See you next time.